Cincy plugged in. Coming to you from the Cincinnati Computer Cooperative Studios. This is WVQC LP Cincinnati, 95.7 FM, your radio free Queen City. Cincy Plugged In, featuring all things music biz and playing the hottest tracks from all kinds of cats. For all kinds of cats, with your host, Cat Perez. Welcome, I'm Cat Perez, and this is Cincy Plugged In, the place that features all kinds of special guests and hot music biz topics to keep you current with what's going on in the music industry and keeps you inspired. Today's episode is taking place via Skype and it's not only available through the airwaves but also through Cincy Plugged In's YouTube channel. So if you would like to find out more about that or watch the video or just listen to it, you have options, right? So keep it plugged in and we'll be right back with today's Music Biz Topic of the Day after this song. Ho singing Perfect by Pink. 
music biz topic of the day. Simply plugged in. Welcome to today's music biz topic, the power of song featuring Carrie Ho. Carrie Ho is the vocal coach and owner of the Songbird Tree located in Melbourne, Australia. She instructs people all over the globe, including in the U.S., Canada, France, Malaysia, Germany, and Korea through in-person and Skype lessons. Today's special guest is an accomplished pianist songwriter, live performer, worship leader, and public speaker. She'll be sharing how singing helps people to flourish in life and keeping you inspired. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you so much for joining me on Cincy Plugged In. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Oh, what a pleasure. Me too. I'm really excited. (laughs) Now, before we dive deep into this topic, I really want to give the audience an opportunity to get to know who you are and how you came to work in the music industry. So could you share a little bit about your personal story? Yeah, absolutely. So when I was 18 and, you know, going to... um, choose preferences for university, I said to my mom, hey, I want to study music. And, you know, straight away there was this sort of disagreement, you know, like how are you going to make a living being a muser, you know? And really she had great intentions. So because of that, my my dreams for um, pursuing music just was completely shattered. And I decided... Right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do something completely opposite. I'm actually gonna go and climb the corporate ladder. All right, of all things. All right, it's so different to music. But I thought I really wanted to do my parents proud. I guess so. Yeah. Um, went into university, did a commerce degree, um, and then decided that I would try my very best to get myself into the biggest firm that I could, or the best, you know, one of the most pre- prestigious firms. And so, um, worked for KPMG, um, who is uh, basically, I mean, they're ranked as top four accounting firms, and. Um, Anyway, I worked there and 12 months later, I found myself almost on the verge of a nervous breakdown mm. and uh, in the, yeah, and in the doctor's office and basically him saying to me, look, you know, you either quit your job or your life is going to go downhill fast, you know, and it was a really big wake up call for me. Um, so at that point, I realized, okay, so maybe doing this whole corporate thing may not be for me, but at the same time, I wasn't quite ready to take that big step, right? So I thought, okay. I obviously don't like finances and accounting, but maybe I'll, I'll go into sort of more HR, recruitment sort of stuff and work with people. So I, I did change uh, my job, um, went into recruitment and worked as a consultant um, for about 15 months. Um, okay. And uh, okay. after that, and, you know, really, I was probably, I would say, at the peak of my career. So I was actually doing really well, um, ranked as top 10 consultants in the company and stuff. But, but there was just something that was empty in my heart. And I just knew that I had to really try and pursue this music, which is my passion, you know. So I walked into my manager's office and I said, hey, I'm, I'm quitting, you know. And yeah. I really want yeah. to pursue my passion in music. And, and, you know, she was really supportive and all that sort of thing. But anyway, so that was in 2004. It was the music that you wanted to do. Absolutely. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I played music um, ever since I was little. Like, I started playing piano when I was nine, have always been singing, you know, doing all those things. And in fact, I used to teach people piano during my university days as a part-time job. So, oh, funny wow. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. So, I've done it and I'd always worked in it. I'd always, you know, have been surrounded by it. But it, it, it just never was an option for me at that time as an actual career. Um, mm-hmm. Just because of you know yeah you know conservative Asian parents and <laughs> um, and you know just just um, I guess not really believing and having the confidence that I could actually make a career out of it you know it was right. always just a hobby um, yeah. but yeah no always yeah. have known you live in Australia you know yes. um, I'm here in the U S and I think it's a similar story that's told that it's not a real job to pursue yes. music or to be a musician, right. you know. So exactly. um, to follow that voice within is very can be very empowering. Yeah. It yeah. can be scary Absolutely. too because we're, we're oh, all told totally. it's not real, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, and to, and to people who are listening who might be thinking, you know, yeah, you know, I resonate with that. I really want to follow my dream and stuff. I do have to say, I mean, it's difficult. It's not an easy path to take, Mm-mm. but it's worth mm-hmm. it. It's it's worth it, you know. Like for me, no turning back. No turning yeah. back ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'll let you finish telling your story, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no worries. But then that's pretty 
quitting my job in 2004 and I was like, what in the world am I going to do? Um, so I, I ended up just trying a, lot, a whole lot of different things. So, you know, I, I ended up teaching music programs in kindergarten, so like to toddlers and to like three, four, five-year-olds. Okay. So, you know, yeah, think of like, um, I don't know, what do, we, what do you have over in the US? I don't know, but like, you know, those kiddie shows? Like play, I don't know if you have like play school and like the Wiggles or whatever. Okay. Sort of sort of yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I went into primary schools as well and taught keyboards and vocals and whatever. Um, and then I ended up, you know, my vocal coach at the time, she actually said to me, hey, I reckon you could be a great vocal coach. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like for me at the mm -hmm. time, I thought, no way. Like it's, no way, I, I can't do this. And she said, no, I really believe in you. I really think that you can do this, you know, and so she trained me um, to be, to become a vocal coach. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, I started off just like fumbling around and, you know, trying to work this thing out, but it's actually become the thing that I love most, you know, um, yeah. which is just incredible. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, and, and it's, so over the last eight years, um, I've done, you know, music uh, teaching, I've, I've recorded some music and sort of been an artist where, you know, just like um, gigging around um, in the local um, places and venues and things like that. Um, yeah. Played in festivals, yeah. you know, songwriting. So, you know, recorded a couple of albums and things like that. Um, and also worked in large contemporary churches where I actually managed artists, um, you know, teams of like up to 120 artists. So I'm talking about uh, music. At the same time? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So like a whole team of people that I would be in charge of and having to lead and manage and train. Uh, and I'm talking about not just musos, but dancers and actors and, mm -hmm. um, you know, technical crew, uh, you know, lighting, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, and I sort of fell into these things. Like it was like opportunities just opened up for me when I decided, when I decided, okay, I'm going to give this thing a go, the door started to open. You know, and yeah. often I found yeah. myself in this situation, sink or swim, you know what I mean? And yeah. feeling like I'm so going to sink, but, you know, just, just going, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a go, you know. So I've had the most amazing opportunities in the last eight years, and it's just, it's just been incredible. And I can't believe that now, you know, eight years later, I can actually sit here and tell you, yeah, I, I am a musician and, and I coach singers around the world. Like, to me, it's so surreal, you know. Um, but as I said to you before, no turning back for me. This is this is it. I love what I do. I just love to tap into that passion of other people and what they're doing with music and in the music yep. industry. And yep. to really hone in that it is about the passion. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah, I yes. love that. We are going to go to a musical break now.
That was Ingrid Wood with Two Weeks Notice. And it's such a great song because it ties into what Carrie was just talking about with her job, leaving her job, and giving a two weeks notice. <laughs> Let's get into the heart of the matter of today's music biz topic. First, I want to ask you, how has your own personal experience with music and singing in particular helped you to flourish in your life yeah. now you might find this really hard to believe because a lot of people really find this hard to believe but as a kid I was really shy really really timid like mm -hmm. I hardly mm -hmm. spoke and you know I was one of those sort of um, nerdy <laughs> um, you know dweeb people that nobody really noticed and I was really scared to speak up in class that kind of thing you know and I didn't yeah. really have many friends like people look at me now and they go no, I can't see that. You know, you look like an amazingly extroverted girl. The yeah, thing you is, do. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, when I was like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, I was a, a real introvert. Like, I really was so afraid, you know. I didn't have mm -hmm. confidence in myself. And for me, music and singing was the only time that I would be able to really express myself. So, so for me, I might be scared to speak up in class, but you put me on a stage, you know, when I was nine years old and get me to play a piano piece or sing a song and stuff. And that was the, the moment where I could really shine, you know. Mm, so for yeah, me, singing yeah. has done a lot for me to help me flourish because it's helped me to discover who I am. It's helped me to express what is deep down in my heart. You know, stuff that you just find hard to express with words sometimes, you know. And as a kid, that was a difficulty for me. Um, I really mm, was very scared, yeah. you know. And, and um, it, it's just made me realize that, you know, I can be more, you know, and, and, and to not be sort of afraid of people judging me and things like that. So for me, singing and music, I mean, it's something I can't live without. That, that, is, that is the extent of, <laughs> of my passion, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I am secretly obsessed. <laughs> yeah. So, and, yeah, yeah. And, and it seems like that, you know, you telling your story earlier, if music has that kind of power to where you are feeling like you – can't go on or life is overwhelming because you're not doing the thing you're supposed to be doing which your heart is telling you to do then it's like just this huge weight on your in your chest you know or on your shoulders so so uh it seems like that's what it helped you to do the music yeah, yeah. what well, really yeah and just to discover who I am you know yeah. gain confidence like yeah all yeah. the things that you said, I guess, as a human being, to really just believe and shine, you know? Yeah, so. Yeah. I want to talk about some of the benefits that mm. singing has for people, just in general. So this yeah. can include, like, health benefits, physical yeah. benefits, social benefits, emotional benefits, you know, things like that. So I hope you have a lot of time, because we're going to be here for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we do. No, anyway. We have quite some time. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, singing 
does, um, you know, I mean, scientifically, it's actually been, you know, there's been studies done and, and, and there's been certain facts that have been proven that singing actually does for, for the, all of these sort of benefits that you were talking about, you know, health, social, emotional. Um, I'll start with the health benefits because I find this really fascinating, right? Okay. Um, did you know that, uh, you know, when, when you're actually taught to sing properly, um, you may have probably heard this around the traps as you've, as you've I don't know, I think you're a singer yourself and, yeah. and you've talked to vocal coaches and whatever, but, mm -hmm. you know, when you're, when you're taught to sing properly, the vocal coach will tell you about a breathing technique that actually engages your diaphragm, okay? And the thing is, when we actually activate our diaphragm in that way, um, we actually promote a better immune system, okay? Mm. And, and you know, like I'm not, I'm no doctor, okay? I'm no medical doctor, and so I'm not going to get into the full-on science of it. Yeah. But the, the, the simple explanation is that, um, you know, our, our bodies have, um, I guess, um, a series of vessels that um, mm -hmm. need to be sort of cleaned mm -hmm. up, okay? So that's our lymphatic system. And um, basically what happens is that the job of that system is to um, basically get the waste um, fluids in our body and then clean them up and then return them to our body and it flows all around our body to, to promote a healthy um, immune system. And when mm -hmm. we use our diaphragm, mm -hmm. all right, when we're actually properly singing, we're using our diaphragm, it helps that process. So it mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. has been proven scientifically that when you sing, you use your diaphragm, and this also works with a belly laugh, by the way, um, because that, that activates the diaphragm as well. It actually um, promotes a healthier immune system. So mm -hmm. anyway, I found that to be I never knew that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. So there's a little bit of the science behind it, and I'm sorry for any doctors or medical people who are listening going, what is she, like, you know, I probably didn't explain it properly in terms of the science part. But, I understand, so. Yeah, cool, cool. So, you know, so that's, that's like one of the health benefits, you know, just a healthier okay. immune system. Um, in terms of social, well, it's such a huge thing. Like, for me as a vocal coach, I don't think I've ever done, like, a, a group workshop where people haven't left feeling uplifted. You know, there's this real immense power of, of singing together, that is just mm, so powerful, yeah. you know. And so, you know, often I've had groups of people who they would never call themselves singers. They would be like, no, I can't sing, you know, I'm tone deaf, whatever. And mm. after an hour of workshop, they're singing four-part harmonies. You know, they've, they've, they've discovered that they can sing. And not only that, but produce harmonies and beautiful sounds together. And there's mm. this real solidarity and, and this sense of community and this sense of, um, I guess, achieving something together. That, that just really makes people go, oh, wow, you know, that's mm -hmm. just really uplifted my spirits. It's, it's just really given me joy, you know. Yeah. Um, I've yeah. had the privilege of um, uh, um, coaching a group of women who were suffering from mental illness um, and who were on the verge of homelessness as well. And every fortnight, we'd go and we'd do like a two-hour singing workshop together, okay. Now, none of these women would profess to be singers, okay. They're all just like, they're, in fact, they're very shy and they feel like, like, like they don't have much self-confidence. But the feedback I got from them was that after every class, uh, you know, a workshop that we did together, that the, the rest of their week was so much better. Like they might have come in feeling depressed, they might have come in because, you know, they all suffer from depression and mental illness and stuff like that. But after a one or two hour session of singing, they just feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. And it gives them a mm. sort of almost mm. like a, a hope to continue on in yeah. their day despite yeah. their challenges. So socially, you know, it really does have a huge impact, you know, and especially singing together. Um, and in terms of um, emotional I mean, as I said before, for me, it was a way of self-expression. And I find that, you know, um, people who feel um, lack of confidence or, or, or just, you know, people who are introverted and feel like they can't really express who they are, singing is another way that they can really just express what's really deep inside their heart, mm, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. And, and that gives a real um, surrender of burden. You know what I mean? Like, you don't feel so heavy. <laughs> yeah. um, as you were before actually you know mm -hmm. so in terms of the yeah. emotional impact it's, it's just crazy and um and also it's just a lot of fun okay so like singing mm -hmm. actually releases sure. endorphins all right into your brain which are like feel good hormones and mm -hmm. chemicals mm -hmm. and it makes you feel great which and would be another health laugh. benefit as well absolutely that's yeah. right exactly right so so there's so many benefits Kat and as I said you know I could go on forever I really could <laughs> <I'll stop. laughs> So maybe we'll come back to some more a little bit later. Keep it plugged in. Keep it plugged in. Keep it plugged in. WVQC 95.7 FM. Radio Free Queen City. Member supported radio. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> 
Hold on, can't let go Everything you dreamed of You one day know If it's in your heart Then soon as so Keep believing You gotta believe it Hold on, can't let go Everything you dreamed of You one day know If it's in your heart Then soon as so Keep believing That's the secret On the side There's some new life Except my past back in my hometown I That was The Secret by Renee Marcoux, and she was a previous guest on Since We Plugged In on the episode called Tips for Touring Musicians. So if you want to check out more tips, you can definitely feel free to visit the website and listen to that episode. You've brought up a lot of good points about the benefits of singing. Why... Do you believe singing is so important for yes. um, for people's lives? Sure. Yeah. Look, the the essence of why I do what I do, Kat, is that I actually believe that um, singing helps people flourish, as as we've just been talking about. Yeah. And flourishing people will change the world. I know that sounds probably a bit cliche, and maybe some people are hearing going, "Wow, she's really naive." Whatever. 
But I truly believe that. I truly believe that when people are flourishing, they will change the world. And I don't mean that that needs to be revolutionary, like going out to globally impact. But even mm-hmm. if, you know, I mean, if you just imagine, you know, when you're as a person, right, when you're feeling good about yourself, when, you've, when you're feeling confident, when you're feeling like you don't have burdens to carry and things like that, you know, you are more likely to even be a more pleasant person to be around, right? And that is in That's itself... True a great impact on, on the people around you. So, yeah, so for me, it's, it's about helping people flourish so that they can actually have a positive impact in their world, you know, no matter how small that is or how big that is, you know. Um, and so, yeah, and so that's why I do what I do, Kat. Like, you know, for me, I'm not just a vocal coach to help people um, sing well, you know. I mean, obviously, the technical aspects of singing is really important because as people, as singers actually learn to to um to actually get a hold of their instrument, their voice, they do increase in confidence and, and all of that sort of thing, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's more yeah. than that, you know. I, I re, for me, it's about empowering singers to use their voice for good, you know, to use their voice for something bigger than themselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because singers, I mean, you know, and I say this about myself as well, we can be a little bit self-centered, all right. It's all about yeah. me, me. me. And, you know, I want to be the next Beyonce. I want to win the voice, whatever, all right. And yeah. it's all about me. And look, all of that is good. It's all well and good. We all should have those sorts of dreams and aspirations to be exceptional at what we do. Um, but at the end of the day, for me, it's about empowering singers to flourish so that they can change the world. And so that's why I believe that singing is so important in, in people's lives. You know, I mean, it brings so much joy and um, and just um, empowers people to be who they are. You know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I can't stop. I can't stop <laughs> talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> now, now, what are some of the ways that you've seen singing help other people to flourish in their lives? You yeah. have worked in a nursing home as well, right? I haven't worked in that, but I've visited nursing homes and okay. done caroling okay. and singing, you know, that sort of okay, thing. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I found is that um, the staff, they told us that with these guys, uh, these, these people that are there, they're either suffering from Alzheimer's disease, dementia, mental illness in a very severe way, right? In such a way that a lot of them can't even do simple things for themselves. Like they can't, they can't talk, they can't feed themselves, um, and they can't walk, you know, stuff like that. Yet, when somebody comes in and does a singing thing, uh, like a sing-along, and they sing all the classic songs that, you know, from the old times or whatever, mm-hmm. it triggers mm-hmm. something in them, and suddenly they're singing along with gusto. And these are people who, who can't even talk, you know? Right. So right. that's really fascinating. I go, yeah. wow, there's power in singing, right? Um, yeah, there's actually a, a YouTube video on that yeah. um, where this this man, he's in, a, I believe, in a nursing home, and that same situation happens where he's not speaking a word. He's actually in a very bad mood, very grumpy. Yeah. He, he doesn't want to talk to anybody. But mm-hmm. what they did is they, and I forget what he had. He either had dementia or, I believe, Alzheimer's. And yeah. they put some headphones with some of his favorite music yeah. that he liked, you know, in the past. And uh-huh. he started singing, and he woke up, and he was clapping. He was on the beat and everything, <laughs> and he was so happy. And then um, he was also to the point in his disease that he couldn't re- be responsive to questions and answer you. Mm. Um, he wouldn't talk to you. But after he listened to the music and was singing... Then, um, and they took it off, they could ask him yes or no questions. Yeah. Now, um, I'm, after this show, I will find the link to that, and I'll put it under the YouTube link, and yeah. I'll put it on Sissy yeah. Plugged In's, you know, Facebook yeah. page as well, so people can check that out if they want to. But it's just amazing. So, totally. yeah. Yeah, seen that video, and it's just, it just, you know, it illustrates everything we're just talking about now. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, and you know, and, and the thing, like, they actually use singing as therapy for stroke patients as well, for example. Mm-hmm. So, you know, stroke patients who have lost the ability to speak, but yet they use the singing to help them learn to speak again. Oh, and wow. I just go, wow, yeah, yeah. You know, so it seems as if music and singing is one of the last things that, that is taken away from people's memories. So they mm-hmm. may forget their family mm-hmm. members, they may forget how to talk and how to eat or whatever, but, but the singing, they remember. Hmm. Like, how fascinating is that yeah and and all we can attribute it to is the power of song you know? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. What are some other ways that you've witnessed people flourish yeah, sure. in their lives through okay, singing? So I think closer to home is, is definitely my, my students, my singing students, or, or as I affectionately call them, my songbirds. Um, anyway, yeah, look, very recently, which was just um, a couple of days ago on the weekend, um, we did a... We did a. We were invited to be a part of a gig to raise money for Oxfam, and so I got a few of my singing students together, and I was just like, "Come on, you know, let's 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 really use our voices to to sing um, for change." Mm-hmm. So they all, even though they were terrified, and you know, because you know, I mean, these students that are, they're not like professional singers, you know, they they're good, but they but that's not what they do for a living. So for them, it was like really scary. But by the end of the night, you know, they were all coming up to me and just thanking me for giving them that, that opportunity because it really empowered them, you know, and they were just like, wow, I, I didn't know I could do that, mm-hmm. you know. So even yeah. just that, you know, it really does help people flourish and it puts people on, on a, like, I guess a new level of understanding of themselves mm-hmm. that they can mm-hmm. actually achieve things beyond what they thought and also that they can actually use um, what they've got, you know, their voices um, to, to actually bless people, you know, and, and to actually be a, a change agent. So that's one very, very practical thing that just happened on the weekend for me. Yeah. Um, but other ways, like, you know, I've seen students, um, so for example, there was, there was one student that I had um, a couple of years ago. She just, she was like the most timid person ever. So like me when I was a kid, right? She was mm-hmm. really shy, um, really didn't have a lot of self-confidence at all, you know? And she said to me, look, I'm coming to sing lessons because I actually want to learn to step out of my comfort zone, you know? Mm-hmm. And I saw her flourish. Like, I saw her walk in lesson one as a very shy, oh, I don't think I can do this, I can't sing, I really don't think I'm good at anything kind of person, to a few months later coming in, you know, even standing taller, you know, um, mm-hmm. and just being able to look people in the eye and being able to smile and laugh more and just not take herself so seriously. Like, that is just a, a massive change. You know, and um, that's beautiful. It's great, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and one of my other students, um, she she was actually um, someone who's been suffering from mental illness and and just like really like clinical depression for ten years, for the last ten years, right, of her life. And I asked her, and, and the thing is, in in the last six months or whatever, I've just seen her change. Like she has become somebody different. You know. And there'd be times where she'd call me up out of the blue and just say, look, I can't make it for my lesson today because I'm just, I can't even get out of bed. Like, that's how bad her depression was, right? And yet in the last six months, that didn't happen, you know? And so one day I said to her, hey, like, how are you going? You know, like, have you found singing to help you at all in your journey of, you know, through this? And she said, oh, absolutely. She said, singing has been, uh, has really healed me. You know, that's what she said to me. And I almost started crying. I thought, really? Oh, wow. You know, and she was like, yeah, yeah absolutely. She goes, now I'm so much more confident than I used to be. And she's like, you know, now, and, and to know that I'm actually, I can do something, I, I can actually be good at something, is right. just incredible. Yeah, so for her, it's actually brought her healing, you know. So, yeah, yeah now that, that's just that's just a couple of examples. But I get I get it. I get students sometimes just saying to me out of the blue, oh, you know, Kerry, coming to singing lessons is better than therapy. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't profess to be a psychologist, okay? I'm really not. But, you know, I have heard that a lot of voice teachers are like, this is therapy to a lot of people. It really is. Yeah, yeah, it totally. Is. And, and, you know, just a simple thing of people coming in, say, after work, and, and they've had a stressful day, they've got deadlines to fill, whatever, and mm-hmm. they come in and they're literally heavy. You can feel it. You can feel this spirit of heaviness on their heart. At the end of the lesson, they're leaving with a smile on their face and they're, like, uplifted and they're like, hey, I came in feeling tired. I don't feel tired anymore. You know what I mean? So yeah. so there's definitely, like, immediate effects that I see um, in my students just even after every lesson or during the lessons, you know. But over yeah. the course of months and years, I actually see people develop more confidence. That's probably one of the biggest things that I see. Um, and, and just um, I see them see more than themselves. You know, they 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 they're not so inward centered anymore, and they and they actually get to see that they've got something to offer to the mm. world mm. in a very positive sense. You know, so yeah, that would be yeah some of the yeah. stories that yeah. I yeah yeah. And we were talking about that emotional aspect of um, one of the benefits of singing, which yep. is you can express yourself better. And I found okay. that you know in vocal lessons because I've taken vo- vocal lessons myself myself you can um sometimes you experience an emotional breakthrough during yeah. the voice lesson and i'm sure yeah. that happens with your students as well 
um, because um, music is emotional. So it makes sense that, you know, while a singer is singing or practicing singing or in a voice lesson or even in a choir, that yeah. you might have an emotional breakthrough and just feel like, yeah. oh, my God, I, I felt that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Or, totally. or it connected... Um, or it connected me to something that I didn't even know was there or that I yeah. forgot was there and that I really needed to pay attention to. Yeah. And that really happens. Have you have you seen that happen with your totally. students or for yourself? Yeah, I, have. I have, absolutely. Um, both, students and myself. But um and maybe that's why people say that it's better than therapy, you know. But yeah, I've had I've had students break down and cry in my lessons mm-hmm. and I've gone, Oh my goodness, what have I done? <laughs> It's actually not me, but that they've actually just had this emotional breakthrough that you've been talking about. In yeah. fact, um, you know, one of my students um, has been struggling with um, his sexuality and um, had experienced a lot of rejection in the past. You know, people mm. just shunning yeah. him and just, you know, and, and him feeling just terrible as a person because of his sexuality. And, um, and, and he has shared with me himself that singing lessons has helped him to actually deal with that. Mm. Um, and and to find healing and and that just blows me away. That That's blows me away because I I'm like I'm just I mean I'm just a vessel. Do you know what I mean? I just yeah. I just do my job and I do and I do it with care and I do do it, and I do do it with love. But I'm just doing this and, and I have no idea of the of what's going on in your heart. You know what I mean? And for yeah. you to say to me, yeah. you know, I have found healing for all of my years of rejection that I've experienced and everything. <sighs> I just I just go. That's why I do what I do. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, Wow, you know that's, that's crazy. Cool. That's such beautiful. a privilege, such a privilege to be a part of people's journeys in that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and for myself, absolutely. Like um, a few years ago, I actually lost my voice, right? Like oh, I actually, goodness. yeah. And and While I, was, you were I was, teaching. This was when I first started. When I had first quit my corporate job. Oh, okay. And to the whole music thing, I overdid it. Like I just, I was too much gigging, too much teaching, too much everything yeah. in in the whole, yeah. in the one day. And you know, our voices are fragile. We can't just be speaking and singing all day, every day for forever. You know. Yeah. And I actually lost yeah. my voice. And I remember, you know, going into um, vocal therapy. So with a with a speech, I mean, sorry, with a vocal therapist. And then saying, sorry, but you can't, you just can't sing for like at least three to six months. <gasps> that was like, just chop my arms off. Oh my goodness, you know, that's how I felt. So yeah. <laughs> for like three three months, um, I could not sing. And that was like a killer for me. So, yeah. you know, it meant that all the pe- emotions were pent up. I couldn't really express myself properly and all of that. So yeah. for me, absolutely, the emotional um, benefits of singing have, have totally, you know, happened for me um, and as I said it just it helps me to express who I am and get stuff out that you, you just can't express with words sometimes you know right right well mm. is there anything else that you um, have seen singing help other people in their lives or, or maybe um, not directly with the music itself but in other facets of their lives I know you mentioned um, when your students oh his sexuality, how it helped him come to terms yeah. and, and to heal yeah. through some of the shame he was going through. And also yeah. um, you talked about how it's helped other people become confident just in yeah. general. Yes. Yeah. Anything else that you've seen? Yeah. One of the common problems that singers struggle with is strain. So, you know, trying mm-hmm. to belt out a high note or whatever and just going for it in a shouty, screamy way. And it feels very uncomfortable and they don't know how to fix it, Right. And so a lot of the time I'm teaching students how to let go of tension, how to let go of, you know, um, yeah, just tension in their throats and in their bodies and also in their minds because sometimes it's psychological. Sometimes it's this psychological thing of I just can't sing that high, mm-hmm. you know, but, but you've, I've taken them through exercises and I know that they have got it in their range. Anyway, so, so part of um, teaching people how to let go of tension and stuff, it comes back to life. It comes back to the thing of, you know, sometimes in life if you're striving too hard for something and you're just like oh, trying too hard to reach or whatever, sometimes you just got to let it go, you know. Sometimes it's about letting go and then it comes, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of like things like that where I go, I'm teaching people how to sing, but it actually really relates to their lives philosophically <laughs> as well, um, mm. which I find really, really amazing and, and, and really interesting. And, um, and another thing is, um, you know, with, with singing, I teach people about good posture, and part of that is, like, grounding ourselves, you know, mm-hmm. and just really feeling mm-hmm. presented, right? Yeah. 
yeah. um, and yeah. standing like really tall and proud and, and, and as if you're, you know, like an oak tree, I say to my students, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that will translate into their lives. So they're going to start to think, okay, well, how can I actually ground myself better in my life? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I said before we try to sing anything, we need to make sure the fundamentals are correct, right? We need to make sure that we don't have tension in our bodies. We need to make sure we're standing right. We need to make sure we're breathing right. They're the three fundamental things that ground us well to be a great singer. And then there's things in life that, you know, what are the things in your life that you need to do to really ground yourself? You know what I mean? How do you center yourself? You know, and that sort of thing. And so I find that it, it, there's just such a big link. There's just such a huge link towards, you know, teaching people how to sing and then how that then um, comes about in their lives, which is quite life-changing for them. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I had no idea until they told me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't know until my students would say to me, you know what, you know, what you teach me in singing, I'm actually learning to apply across my life. Yeah. And it's actually changing it. Yeah. And I just mm-hmm. go, wow, that's incredible. That's really incredible. I love that. What you're just saying about, um, you know, the whole tension thing and trying yep. too hard for the notes, it, it was reminding me of what you were saying about when you were trying so hard to fit in something that wasn't in your heart with the, with the career that you had yes. as well. And so when you let go and finally trust, you you had to let go and you didn't know what your next steps were going to be, but you just let go anyway. And yes. so singing can be like that um, once you learn to free your voice. Yes. I think that's also what helps us to get grounded as well, you know, yes. and, and it's that whole, um, I guess, trusting yourself and what you really want in life. And as far as what you were saying about um, getting grounded, that's part of uh, your your motto, isn't it? Get grounded and yeah. take flight. So my tagline you're talking about, yeah, yeah. is uh, get grounded, take flight, and sing. Yes. And yes. yeah, and for me, it means um, so much more than just in the singing, you know, because when mm. I when when we get grounded, yes, we're, we're getting grounded in in whatever it is that that centers us and makes us, you know flourishes people, then that enables us to actually take flight, right? Mm-hmm. And until mm-hmm. you're grounded, you can't take flight, you know? Even an aeroplane starts on the tarmac, right, before it actually gets to fly off. And then once you take flight and you really sing, so on, on the, you know, the, the literal sense of singing in terms of having a great voice and singing what you want to sing, but in life, singing, find your, finding your voice, you know what I mean? Um, living the life that, that, you, that you were called to live, you know, so for me, it's about finding purpose and it's about calling um, and connecting with that greater purpose, you know. Yeah, I love it. Time for another musical break. <laughs>
was Ingrid Wood with When This Life Is Over. And Ingrid Wood was also a featured guest on Sissy Plugged In for the episode called How to Develop Your Own Authentic Sound as a Musician, which is also on Sissy Plugged In's website. Our show is coming to an end, but before we end the music biz topic today, I really want to let people know how they can get a hold of you if they want to. So can you share what your website is? Absolutely, yes. So for more information about me, it's at uh, www.thesongbirdtree.com. Are you on Facebook and Twitter? So Facebook page is facebook.com slash thesongbirdtree. Twitter on twitter.com slash Kerry Ho. And that's Kerry, K-E-R-R-I. And Ho is H-O. And also on YouTube. Um, And the channel is The Songbird Tree. Well, thank you so much, Carrie, for joining me on the show. I appreciate all your insight. I especially appreciate your passion. And I really hope that this show can serve as inspiration for anybody who wants to follow their dreams. For those of you watching or listening, there's always more fun happening on Cincy Plugged In's Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Cincy Plugged In. I'm also on Twitter at Cincy Plugged In, no spaces, just one word. Cincy Plugged In also has a YouTube channel, so you can just do a search for that and find the videos there. You can always also visit the website, which is www.sensyplugged.in.com. Feel free to plug in the show. It airs Fridays from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Cincinnati, Ohio on WVQC 95.7 FM. Also, you can live stream on the Internet at www.wvqc.org forward slash listen. And you can listen in on your TuneIn app if you have an Android phone or iPhone. The very last thing I want to leave you with is remember the world needs more people who love their jobs and who are living their dreams. So live and love. Yay! (laughs) Okay, that's